everyone, my name is Hayden. Welcome to the first ever video on the Deter Dynamics YouTube channel. Uh, apologize about my voice. I'm doing this while I'm feeling sick. Ah! So, bear with me. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the Voron 0.1 Sideswipe project and some modifications that I've made to that. Um, the original project is made by Christian Thomas. Um, very cool dude. I uh, did a lot of fantastic work on this. Um, let's uh, check it out and see what's... So, if you're not familiar, the Sideswipe project is an auto bed leveling setup for the 0.1. Very, very overkill, and I love it. Um, basically how it works is you have a servo motor over here that bolts to the frame. Um, he has an option where you either use uh, nuts in the, in the rails or without. I opted for the one that uses nuts just because I like it to be a little bit more solid. Um, but this servo motor is connected to this arm. This arm will pop out and you have a little probe block that sits in there with the, this little magnet just to kind of keep it in place. You have two magnets on top and on the bottom of it you have an Omron micro switch. Uh, focus, focus, there you go. Um, this is a micro switch that's pretty commonly found in like high-end gaming mice. Um, very, very clicky, very responsive. I'm getting really good repeatability using it. Um, so what ends up happening is these two magnets are um, making contact with the pins on this. And then there's two magnets in here that are making contact with these two wires up here. So uh, once it's on there, you're getting conductivity to the magnets and then that's uh, transmitting all the uh, probe data to your main board. So really, really cool how it works. Um, very portable. Uh, this is the part that I've actually modified right here. This is the only thing that I've touched besides the uh, software configuration of it. So um, a lot of people on Christian Thomas's uh, projects were kind of complaining that uh, using this, you either uh, have to uh, minimize or you have to subtract some of the length that you're able to travel on the bed or you have to take your your front door off the reason for that is because the way his uh, probe mount originally sat you'd have the probe um, further forward than the mini afterburner and the afterburner is already very very close to the door as it's as it is so it'd be sitting about here and you'd have about that much distance now that you've lost. I think it was about 11 millimeters that you would lose of travel um, forward and aft, or just forward, I mean. Um, so you would, uh, if you were trying to use the full 120 millimeters of your bed, your door would you know, constantly be getting bumped open. And uh, that's not good for things like ABS. So um, I sought to solve that. Um, I did it by actually dropping this part down even further and then having it uh, go aft, if that makes sense. So it is, uh, let's see if we can get a good shot of it here, it is pretty close to the heater block. Can you see how much of a gap there is? There's, there's, there's somewhat of a gap there, um, but it is close. And uh, I will say I've been pretty much exclusively printing ABS with with this machine and I have not noticed any of this melting or anything like that um, down here, especially with how close it is. So um, I, I think the silicon sock is definitely helping that. If you're not running your boron with the silicon sock, you should be doing that anyway. So yeah, definitely make sure you have that on there. Uh, the only thing I, I have noticed with it being that close in, in comparison with uh, Christian's original design is that now, what happens is, uh, if I am probing the bed with the nozzle fully hot, I'm getting some erroneous triggering of the, uh, the probe, but there is a way around that. What I do is I have Cura configured to heat the bed up, then run auto bed leveling, and then after that's done, then we start heating up the nozzle. And uh, that seems to have eliminated um, the, the issues I was having. This clipper would report that you know, the probe triggered prior to movement. And I think what's happening, um, I'm not 100% sure, but um, I know magnets lose their uh, magnetic properties when they're heated up. Um, and I think that might 
play in on um, some of the conductivity elements of it too. I'm not 100% sure, but I just know that when this is hot, or at least uh, warmed up, it starts sending error codes, and it seems very random when it does it. So I've just noticed that running it cold, it, it's not an issue. So um, yeah, so setting current to do that is, uh, it, it helped a lot. Um, and uh, it, you know, I, I think it's a good idea anyway, because um, if you're trying to probe your bed while the nozzle is hot, um, it's not very likely that this will happen, but what could happen, there's a chance, it, is you'll have some oozing of filament coming out from your nozzle while you're trying to probe. And there is a possibility that a nozzle or that that the filament could uh, wipe off on the bed, and then you've uh, probed the filament, and now you have a bad report. So, I mean, not likely, but it's just you know a little bit of extra peace of mind that it won't happen. Um, so, yeah, I think it fixed uh, a couple things for me. Um, the other thing that I think this fixed, which was an added bonus that I hadn't intended on, was um, because of how low this sits now in comparison to Christian's, um, the servo was actually sitting higher up on, on this rail. And what would, what would end up happening is this is, this is how the uh, probe block sits like that. When, uh, when you're not printing, it's stowed away back here out of the way. But his was higher up, so these rails, when they're going back and forth like this, it would end up actually picking up the uh, the pro block, and it would, you know, just start start sliding back and forth in the gantry like that. And uh, you know, it wasn't hurting anything. It would just, you know, it'd go back and then it'd just get slotted right back onto the arm. Um, but I didn't really care for that too much, so. Yeah, the benefit is now this is lower. The magnets aren't strong enough to pick up on that. They're just out of the way, um, doing their thing. So, a little extra bonus there. Um, hadn't intended on that, but it, it kind of just worked out. So, pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, in the description of this video, we'll have my clipper configuration for this um, because you will need to adjust that um, if you're running Christian's original. Um, I had to modify the coordinates on how the gantry actually picks up that magnet. Um, so I've already done the work for you there. You're just gonna have to kind of uh, adjust uh, where your servo is sitting um, vertically. Um, but that's pretty easy. Just loosen it up, drop it down, tighten it back up, and you're good to go. Um, I'll also put my um, my slicer settings in on how to uh, start with just heating the bed, then doing the mesh, and then heating the nozzle, so I'll have that in there as well. Um, I'd say that's definitely mandatory for this because of, you know, erroneous triggering and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, seems to have fixed a lot of the issues that I think the community was complaining about with uh, this, this uh, whole setup. Um, I hope hopefully it helps um, people that are using it and hopefully it brings more people into the Sideswipe project that are um, interested but not sure about you know the compromises that they would have had to have made. Um, yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, thank you so much again to Christian Thomas for uh, the work that you've done on this project. I'm very happy to have helped uh, maybe make it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to uh, link to his YouTube channel. Definitely check him out. Um, and uh, I'll have the, uh, the STL for the probe mount. I'll have all the configuration stuff that you need in the description. So check it out. Um, let's uh, start making some cool shit. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, like I said, this is my first YouTube video, so we're only gonna get better. Uh, I have uh, tons of plans coming up. I'm going to be building a CNC. We're going to be doing some CAD design. I'm probably going to put some tutorials out for that on how I kind of uh, model everything up and uh, go to a finished product. Um, tons of tons of really cool ideas. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around and uh, have a good one.